Call of Duty might actually be good this year? EA fighting big government to make sure they can keep selling loot boxes? Big government. Apple introducing new iPhones that may or may not be worth the price? It's certainly been a crazy week for video games and tech, so let's just jump right into it. Yeah, if you can believe it, it's actually looking like Call of Duty's foray into the Battle Royale genre is actually paying off in a very big way as the first details and actual gameplay footage was released last week showing off exactly what players could expect when they get to drop into the game. Where we drop him, boys. There's many places throughout the history of Call of Duty Black Ops. Mm. There's even zombies. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So on Monday, the first beta was released on the PS4 exclusively, which should stand as a great representation to how the game will perform on console upon release for both the Xbox and the PS4 platforms. And I mean, I got to hand it to Treyarch. The game runs pretty damn well for a battle royale mode on a console, considering the graphical intensity of a Call of Duty game. Now, of course, the graphics aren't going to be as good as Battlefield. No, no. Well, just the other uh, uh, modes in the Call of Duty game. Oh, but yeah. It has to be toned down a bit, but still, yeah. it runs smooth. Got to downgrade those textures just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So at the launch of the beta, the game dropped you into their map against 79 other players, which is a number we weren't sure they could even hit. They did. Yeah. And most console games feature upwards of 64 players on a single map, so getting that number up to 80 while still being able to play smoothly on a console is a pretty good accomplishment. Yeah, bravo. That number was even increased to 88 total players after a quick update, so it really looks like they're working their way up to that full 100 players. As for the game itself, people are apparently enjoying the hell out of it. And while it does appear to be just a Call of Duty version of PUBG, right down to how it looks and plays, the fact that it's stable is really impressive and already a leg up on PUBG. Yeah. How's Which... that fixed PUBG campaign going? Well, also PUBG is an Xbox exclusive for consoles. Uh, no, no. Still? Yeah. Now, PlayStation, of course, has H1Z1. Well, anyways. Whoa, God. Which one of these broken on, pieces of shit do I play? Based on how this looks and plays, it's going to be very weird for PUBG moving forward. Anyways, there's obviously some bugs in this beta and some improvements that could and most likely will be made as they creep towards release, like the ability to very quickly loot items and also showing off, you know, what guns you're trying to pick up from a distance. Yeah, how does that even work on a console? You gotta hold the square button. Uh, anyways, this is that's a console-specific problem and it's already been improved via updates. It'll probably be way more intuitive on PC right out of the gate. But the fact that this mode that's getting bundled together with everything else that comes with the game it makes it pretty appealing to previous fans of this whole series or fans of the BR genre in general. Xbox and PC players will be able to potentially get their hands on it this weekend when the beta is released for those platforms and while the Xbox version will most likely mirror the PS4 depending on which of the fucking 10,000 Xbox consoles you play on. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see how it plays on PC and just how optimized it is and if it starts yeah. out with 100 players. I mean, I'm definitely not getting it for a console. Are you kidding? Ugh, God. Yeah, I tried how, to play, do you, how do you aim like this? I've tried to play PUBG and Fortnite on console, and it just isn't a good experience. But I understand that I understand that if you only play on console, you can learn how to play it correctly. There's a lot of really I good mean, Fortnite players on Xbox. I was pretty okay at Call of Duty, like, years and years ago. So, so you learn it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so a good Call of Duty game in 2018? Sure. I mean, <laughs> we're as surprised as anyone, but Treyarch has the best track record with these titles, so it's not entirely crazy. So good for them. And sure, a lot of people out there, ourselves included, aren't really fans of this series in general and will probably stay away regardless. I mean, I'm going to play the PC beta. I thought the, the regular version of the game when it did the PC beta, it was beautiful and smooth and way different and better yeah. playing than any Call of Duty title I've played in recent memory, including World War II. So I'm going to try it out. I'll probably get it on PC, honestly, because I, I like Battle Royale games. PUBG is a broken, max, broken mess. I don't enjoy Fortnite at all. It's too cartoony. <laughs> yeah. So this might this might this might be the one scratch that itch. All right. Me. But yeah, as far as setting goals for a title and pretty much nailing everything that they've promised, we really do have to hand it to them. Good job, Triarch. Well, this time, this time, we'll see. It, it could be, you know, the Call of Duty tradition has always been. Here's the one thing that they can come through on. Call of Duty tradition always been day of release, servers are fucked, <laughs> just yeah. completely screwed. Well, you who can't knew do anyone anything. would want to play this on the day we released it? Hey, day one. Maybe this is a big clusterfuck, maybe it isn't, but so far, so good. And you know, it's rare for us to say that about a big AAA title. So, you know, yeah. you want us over. And uh, yeah, look for bullet-riddled wedding proposals in there. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. So Can you make my wife into a zombie? <laughs> she would love it. This fall season is stacked, though. There's a pretty much something for everyone. And with all the titles that are coming out, it'll be interesting to see how just, just how well the new COD sells. Spider-Man just came out, but you'd imagine uh, some people might be bored of it by next month. But then you got Fallout 76, Red Dead Redemption 2, Super Smash Bros, and um, Battlefield 5, oh. Battlefield V, which eh, doesn't seem like it's doing too well. Yeah, now, you might not be aware of this. I certainly wasn't, and even when I did become aware of it, I didn't care. And that's coming from a big-time Battlefield fan big previously. Big gamer. But there was a completely open beta for Battlefield 5 recently, and the reaction in general, outside of the hardcore Battlefield fan base, has been lukewarm at best, because this new release, it honestly just kind of seems like a big DLC for Battlefield 1. I wouldn't be surprised if this was one of the worst-selling Battlefield games in recent history, especially when you consider the previous list of other releases that we mentioned that are all coming out around the same time frame. So, yeah. I, I was like, I was playing Destiny Forsaken, and it was like, hey, Battlefield V, open beta. And I was like, huh. Well, back to Destiny. Yikes. But uh, speaking of Battlefield, and speaking of the company who publishes it, EA, though. EA is currently fighting another battle over in Europe right now regarding that whole loot box controversy that they themselves are pretty much responsible for. But before we get into that, we've got good news, everyone. Yeah, so after launching this channel in June, and thanks to all of you watching, subscribing, and supporting our show, we were able to get our first ever sponsor, paid promotion for an episode, and it's for a product we already know and love. We're very Makes pleased. Makes it easy. Yeah. yeah. We're very pleased to announce that this episode is sponsored by Blue Apron. Blue Apron. Something I actually use. All regularly. the time. We've added a custom link for our viewers at the very top of the description below. And the first 50 people who sign up for Blue Apron using our link will get $50 off your first two weeks. So we thought just telling you about the service would be fine. But we also figured, hey, let's just show you while we talk about their product and service. Blue Apron delivers all the farm fresh ingredients you need right to your doorstep in exactly the right proportions in a refrigerated box so that your ingredients will stay fresh even if you're not home when the package arrives. No trips to the grocery store and no waste from unused ingredients. I hate the grocery store. Yes. Get me out of there. You can create and enjoy delicious chef designed recipes in 40 minutes or less right there in your own kitchen. Be the chef you always dreamed of being. Yeah, I mean, it definitely worked for both of us. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't really know much about cooking before I signed up for Blue Apron. Now I, I really enjoy it, actually. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they offer plans for two people as well as a family plan. You get to choose from eight recipes. You get to choose three out of those eight. It's fun. And any combination of those recipes every week. And they're uh, always adding new recipes that you can cook and eat a wide variety of meals, all with prices that start as low as $7.49 per, per serving. We're both... We've both been using Blue Apron for a while now, and we'll be honest, before Blue Apron, like I said, we weren't too great at cooking. But the convenience and ease of use, thanks to their instructions and recipes, has turned us into quite the competent set of cooks. Now, I'm no chef. I'm a real sous chef. But I can cook things now. So, uh, yeah, please check out the link in the description below. Be one of the first 50 to sign up. Get that $50 off discount for your first two weeks and check it out. Mm -hmm. We're stoked to have them sponsoring an episode, and we hope that uh, you're as excited as we are, because it really does help us out as we continue to grow the channel. We'd love to see the support of sponsors like this. Now let's get back into the news. Yeah, so back to the EA story. EA might end up in criminal court dun -dun. over in Belgium, thanks to its apparent refusal to remove loot boxes from its games, which defies the ruling by the Belgian Gaming Commission, stating that certain video game loot boxes constituted illegal gambling and required developers to remove these types of microtransactions from the games that they release in Belgium, also in the Netherlands. Now, according to reports from various local news outlets over there, EA's refusal to remove loot boxes, specifically regarding the FIFA 19 release, has put them in the crosshairs for legal action, AKA, they broke the law and will now have to go to court for it. Now, those reports state that the Belgian Gaming Commission has sent notification of these violations to the country's public prosecutor's office and that they are now in the midst of an investigation. Regarding EA's stance on this whole thing and the reason why they would even think to include these card packs in the game in defiance of the regulations, Ars Technica points to a conference call led by EA's chief financial officer back in May who stated that these types of purchases wouldn't be considered gambling because... Players always receive a specified number of items in each pack. And secondly, we don't provide or authorize any way to cash out or sell items in virtual currency for real money. Which basically boils down to, uh, well, when you buy it, you at least get something. You get something. And you can't exchange it for money, I yeah. guess. But, I mean, that's not really the point, is it? 
people pay for these things because they want to unlock specific items and it, it comes off as predatory because the odds of you getting exactly what you want aren't really in your favor so you have to keep spending and uh, keep buying in order to hopefully eventually get exactly what you want or a cool cosmetic item <sighs> i just don't get that i've never i've never bought a micro loot box I'm, i've never really life. played a fifa and i know that you get more than just cosmetic items in this which is why it's so predatory because you build a dream team but uh, apparently like the fifa thing has been going on way longer than any of the modern loot box controversy because it is oh. stacked the way it is. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, I mean, if you do this, you're taking a risk by buying something that will pay out a random digital good. You are gambling though on the fact that sure, you could get what you want and he is saying, well, it's not gambling because you get something. So ah. uh, this whole thing is almost certainly going to court and will be up for a judge to decide. And it's basically EA in a legal battle with an entire country. Do their judges have the cool wigs? I don't know. Hmm. I think that's just Britain. Okay. Well, it, it'll be very interesting to see how this whole thing is handled, especially considering how new some of these laws are. Still, you can't help but just sit in astonishment at the way EA constantly tries to keep its title as the world's most hated game publisher. You know what, Belgium? Fuck you. Yeah. And it's like, I don't even get why they do this shit, because every time news of this happens, like, I, full disclosure, I own stock in EA. and. Their stock on a normal non-drama time period steadily goes up because they're just printing money basically. And then something like Battlefield gets delayed, the whole Star Wars controversy happens, this happens, then it's just like, boop! You just lost three months of progress, you fucking idiot. Ba I, I forgot about that Battlefield got delayed. Yeah. And it makes sense because why would you release it immediately after Call of Duty, especially when you've seen the product that they're putting out? Yeah. So I feel sorry for your stock. I mean, whatever. It'll bounce back. <laughs> It always does. Uh, I hope I'm gonna hold that back. The American economy is strong. Anyway, Speaking of America, yeah. yeah. By the way, over here in the U.S., we're still fine uh, apparently with this whole uh, loot box thing. So grab your mom's credit card when FIFA drops. Swipe, swipe. Uh, it's the American way. Yeah. You want to win? Get ready to pay up, kid. It's just like real life. Yeah. You want to win? You gotta pay. This isn't a meritocracy. You gotta spend money to make money. Yeah. Now, moving away from gaming, though, Apple just released all their new info regarding their new line of phones for the next year or so, and. Uh, that's a little confusing and a lot expensive. There's a whole lot more X's flying around, so let's take a brief look at what they're offering with the upcoming releases of their new phones. Did they play uh, X Gun Give It To You during the presentation? <sighs> and drank Pepsi Max. Yeah. And uh, Max Hedrum was actually the guy who debuted it. And yeah. um, I don't know, it's all really confusing and I can't see too many big leaps here and we'll talk about that too at the end, but the iPhone XS bit excessive, don't you think? There's the, there's also the iPhone XS Max. The maximum amount of excessiveness. And also the iPhone XR. No. Oh. You don't got one for that? No. Oh, uh, they also had some new watch stuff, but it's kind of hard for us to care about that. So back to the phones. The iPhone XS. This is going to get so annoying, and it should for everyone that's very confused by it. Uh, the iPhone XS has improvements to its facial recognition software that will allow for faster face ID. It's got stereo sound, better graphical performance, and apparently it has a new neural engine. Okay. Uh, its chip, the A12 Bionic, will apparently open apps 30% faster. And guys, it's even more waterproof than before. For all you toilet droppers out there. That's my fetish. Oh, <laughs> I only use phones that have been dipped mm. in my own creation. There are some big improvements to the camera, including a feature called Smart HDR, which basically takes a bunch of pictures at once and uses that to give you the best version of the photo that you wanted to take. And it'll allow users to alter the depth of field after taking the photo, which is impressive. Mm -hmm. That's a cool feature. No need to run down and buy f-stops anymore. The XS features a 5.8 inch screen. The XS Max is essentially the same phone as the XS, but it'll feature a much larger screen coming in at 6.5 inches. The little brother to these phones, the iPhone XR, will be the cheaper model and obviously less features and power under the hood. Okay. My review, this is all a bit excessive. <laughs> Speaking of cheap, these phones are not cheap. Even their budget model, quote unquote budget model, the XR, that's gonna cost $749 for their cheapest version of the phone when it goes on sale with the other models featuring I'd say shocking price tags themselves. The iPhone XS starts at $1,000 for the 64 gig option and goes all the way up to $1,350 for 512 gigs. The XS Max, they really should have put a triple X on the end of Max. Yeah. The 
triple X, max XX. That one starts at $1,100 for 64 gigs, and it goes straight up to nearly $1,500 for the one with the most storage options, uh, which is insane. I'm going to skip getting a new phone and just walk around with a gold brick in my pocket. Yeah. Oh, sorry. That's my $1,500 gold brick. Sorry, can't hear you. My gold's too loud. Uh, anyways, as we said before, new features and our that all that stuff, it's cool. But for us, it feels like we've already previously hit a point where yearly releases of phones, they just don't really excite us all that much, especially when you see a price tag like this attached to it. My phone's two years old. Just carry around a laptop. Time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Where, they need to bring back PDAs. Yeah. Bring back PDAs. Mm -hmm. That's how you innovate. Yeah. You go to the past and you bring it back. Yes. So cool, you can open apps faster and your face unlocks your phone. Your camera is highly improved, but almost everyone who uses their phone's camera is just uploading photos to Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Can't really see the point in shelling out over $1,000 on a new phone every year, or even every two years, for features that aren't really going to affect the general user experience. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> that pretty much says it all. Even people that are iPhone fanboys I saw on Twitter today were just like, nah, pass. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, well, like, the iPhone X is a tremendously good phone, and everyone, yeah. Everyone who actually shelled out for that one last year has no fucking reason. Absolutely has no reason. Absolutely no reason to buy a new generation. Also, like the uh, the Apple event, it, it, it I was watching it, it like turned into something that used to be like for, seemingly for mainstream access. Like, here's what it can do. Here's how we've improved it for your experience. Yeah. And now I watched it and it was just like, we got so many fucking teraflops in this bad boy. And it's just like, who? What normal person walking around gives a shit about the teraflops? Just how fast can it play Fortnite, and how quickly can I snap a check? If they if they don't pull out those bullshit specs, the presentation would be five minutes yeah. long. It'd just be like, hey, you see, the watch has the mouse on it's it. It's a little bit faster, Mickey Mouse. Now you can use Goofy on the watch, and boom, you're done. Yeah, I'm sure it's a fine phone. Anyways, the big Google announcement for the Pixel 3 is scheduled for October 9th, and while pretty much everything has been leaked about that phone, <laughs> just no security over there. <laughs> no, uh, we're still interested in the pricing since both of us completely skipped the Pixel 2. Will Google follow Apple's lead by making their phones so expensive that no one wants to upgrade it? Probably, but only time will tell. Yeah, get those uh, credit cards ready, kids. Swipe, swipe. Buy your FIFA team, and then yeah. buy a gold iPhone, and you'll be set for at least nine months. Nine more months. Anyways, that's it for, uh, for the show today. We'll see you back here real soon for Weekly Weird News and News Dump, please, again, Support our show by checking out Blue Apron using the link in the description. Tell your friends to smash that subscription button on our channel so we can bring in more sponsors to help keep this channel running. And be sure to check out the latest episode of Tech News Day. Do it. Do it. Also go to the Patreon. Bye.